Um, the, how do you know you won't get a national security order slapped on you? Very good question. And this actually came up uh, very recently when we were meeting with a group of, of uh, folks in New York. And I said, maybe I will. But if it's on camera, I mean, I remember Ted Koppel of uh, Nightline asked me this. And I said, well, I'll come on a show like yours and tear it up. But the other part of it that I didn't talk about is having millions of people know what you're doing. Because here's a bit of a keto. This group is like, they're like vampires. They do really well in the darkness of secrecy. They do not, writ large, want to be caught in a bright billion watt spotlight, which we have in a sense created around what we're doing, for better or for worse. For my privacy, it's for worse, but for other reasons, it's very good. Because if they were to do such a, a clownish thing, and the cameras are rolling at a lab, or it, it, it did it to, it would be exposed widely, that, that there is a group operating off the reservation that has tried to do a national security order or made an overt threat or what have you. So I think that the public, and I say this sincerely, you all sharing the word on this and everyone on, on YouTube sharing this interview, the public ultimately is our shield and it's probably why we're all still here because the public knowing what we're doing is protective. You know, if you go to the National Reconnaissance Office that runs all these super secret spy satellites, their headquarters, above the door it says, we own the night. And I always say, well, we own the light. We own disclosure. <laughs> so they can own the night, we'll own the light. Um, and so you don't, if you don't agree to play on the field of secrecy, you can transcend it and go, stay in the field of, of telling the truth and being out there. But it has to be done with lots of people coming together. And that's the beauty of what we can do now with the internet and communication systems and the app and what have you. So that is our first line of strategic defense. It's counterintuitive. And almost every technology person I know who's worked on this and almost everyone who's wanted to do funding of this sort of energy technology has wanted to do it secretly because they think they're gonna outfox the national security state. I said, oh no, you're not. You're, you, you think you're, the, the world's gonna be the path to your door and you're gonna you know, be this mogul like you know, Steve Jobs was for Apple. No, I said, before the public beats the path to your door, Murder Incorporated is gonna meet a path to your door. So you've got to do this with your eyes wide open and do it very openly. And the intellectual property secrecy patent route, uh, I think is uh, maybe later, I hope we don't have to go back to that, but for various applications, but the fundamental science and technology gotta be open source. But then when it is, and it's been reproduced, and you have thousands of these devices going out, one of our plans is some of the celebrities that have followed our work, that I don't want to name, is to have their homes running on. Imagine someone on the cover of People magazine. You know. So at a certain point, you get this out there and you just sort of, you'll get a fund, so you have a couple hundred of them made and you gift them to the right people. In academic institutions, uh, celebrities, pop culture icons, rock music stars that I've met, be pretty cool. And that you, that's very hard. I mean, the hidebound at Harvard may not talk about it, but I suspect Steven Seagal would, or Bono of you too, right? So, I, you know, uh, you can read between the lines, and I think that's where uh, the public coming together, but using a strategy. The strategy we have is a really complex uh, strategy, but it's really, when it gets right down to it, very, very simple. And that is, you do it, out there, fully in the open, and that way you're most protected. And to the degree you're doing anything secretively, you're at great risk. Mm -hmm. It's very counterintuitive uh, because it's not what people normally do with science and technology. Mm -hmm.